So I mentioned variability before, and we talked about it using the range. But the way in which we typically talk about uh, variation um, in statistics is with a statistic known as a standard deviation. And the standard deviation is a really important statistic. It's probably um, one of the most single most important statistic in statistics. Um, and what it is is an estimate of the typical distance that a value is from the mean. So it represents, on average, how far we might expect a data value to be from the mean. And we can see the formula for it down here. It maybe looks a little ugly to you, but it's really not so bad. Um, what it's saying, and uh, I, I mentioned this last time, that this right here is the sigma, and it's adding up, it's summing things up, so it would be like adding these together. So I can, I'll expand this a little bit. <clears throat> so it would say the square root of x1 minus the mean of x, that's squared, plus x2 minus the mean of x squared, dot, 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 up to if we have n of them, x of n minus x bar over 2. Again, those, that's the mean. And then this is all divided by n minus 1. So what it's representing is what each of these values represents, right? If we look at just, say, this one right here. If we zoom in here a little bit, x1 minus, oops, x1 minus x bar squared, okay? <clears throat> what this is saying is that this is measuring how far x1 is from the mean of x, right? So if we're doing x1 minus x bar, if that value, if this value is below the mean, this value will be negative. If this value is above the mean, this value will be positive. And so what we're going to do is we're going to square that. And so we're squaring. So um, we're, we're squaring this value. So we're getting sort of like this squared distance, right? We're getting the distance that a value is from the mean, but we're squaring it. So it's a squared distance. Now we're going to do that for every single value of x we have, right? And just to make it clear, if we had like a variable called x and had values of say 2, 3, 4, then, that, then the first value... Um, might correspond to 2, the second value 3, and the third value 4, and so on and so on and so on up till, till we get up to n. Maybe that's like 7. Okay? So what this is going to say is, okay, we're going to add up all of the squared distances that the values are from their mean. Great. And then we're going to divide by n minus 1. Okay, so if we take up all of the squared distances, if we add them all up, and then we divide by n, which is the sample size, that's kind of like giving us an average squared distance, right? Because that's how you calculate an average, is you take all of the values and you divide it by the total number of values there were. So we're getting, a, we're getting now an average squared distance. That's what we would get if we didn't have that... Uh, if we, if we didn't have the square root, and we just had all of this part here without the square root. Now, <clears throat> we'd be, the reason we, wa we care about that square, uh, square root is that we want to go back to our original unit, right? So if we take the square root, we'll go back to the unit. So if you can imagine that maybe x is measured in inches, so it's 2 inches, 3 inches, 4 inches, seven inches, and maybe that's somebody's hand. I don't know, two inches would be awfully small. But let's just imagine that maybe it's finger length or something. Well, now seven inches is very long. Um, but um, so if we take those values and we subtract them from the mean and square them, we're now in the units of squared inches. And so the way in which we can move from a, uh, that unit of squared inches is by taking the square root. And that brings us back to the original unit we're on, which is inches. So. The standard deviation is going to be basically the sum of squared distances divided by the total number of values there are. So we're getting the average squared distance. And then we're going to take the square root. So we're now just going to find out what our typical distance is from the value from the mean, of a value from the mean. And you're going to work on an activity in class to go over this that will hopefully help solidify this formula a little bit more. Now, I'm not going to actually expect that you're going to work with this formula. Uh, a computer will do this in, 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 in every situation but the most toy example. Um, it's a lot of calculations, and there's a lot of opportunity for you to make mistakes. 
So I just think what's really important here is that you understand intuitively that the squared standard deviation is the typical distance a value is from the mean. And that's sort of what I just said to you, in that we take a value, we subtract the mean, we square it, so now it's a sum, a sum of a squared distance, and then we add them all together, so we, get, we sum up all of them, all of, sum up all those squared distances, we take the average of that, and we uh, take the square root because we squared it. Otherwise, we would end up with uh, values that would be zero. And we'll again, we'll do an activity like this in class. So understand this intuitively. <clears throat> in the sample, we represent the standard deviation as s. In the population, we represent it as sigma. And as a reminder, s then is going to be a statistic. Sigma is going to be a parameter. S can change from sample to sample. Sigma cannot change from sample to sample because sigma is the parameter that we don't know. We're always going to use the sample standard deviation to estimate the population standard deviation. So let's think about what impacts the standard deviation. Well, large gaps and large ranges in our distance, in our data, are going to make the standard deviation larger. So that kind of makes sense, right? So if our data ranges over a larger uh, number of values, we would expect our standard deviation to be larger. And if, our, if we have gaps in our data, that also makes sense because maybe those gaps are uh, subsequently making the range a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Another thing is if two variables have similar distributions, if one looks more bell-shaped, it typically will have a smaller standard deviation, okay, if it looks more bell-shaped. So if we go back to the slide just before here, we see that uh, the Gen 2 data points range over a larger, uh, go over a larger range. The chin strap ones are over a shorter range. We would expect the standard deviation for Gen 2s to be larger than the standard deviation of pin straps for their body mass distribution.